All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Servan de Molle, and I'm the founder and executive director of Code for Fun, uh, a nonprofit organization aiming at making computer science education accessible to all students in grade K to 12. And tonight I will be presenting our program, High High School, and the process of enrolling for our fall 2021 semester. Uh, so please remain muted and during the presentation, and if you have any question, uh, use the message board, uh, the chat, um, and I will address the questions at the end of the presentation. This meeting is recorded and will be posted online on our website uh, in case people missed it or if you need to review some details. So what is Hack High School? Uh, ICA School is a program that has been created because of the lack of opportunities to expose computer science, uh, to explore computer science in high school. We strongly believe that before going to college or uh, picking up a first job, every student should have done some coding to know if they like it and to grasp a basic understanding of the field. So the program was created four years ago and it has changed every year, especially last year when our partnership with School 42 ended, but also because of the pandemic that drove the program to be hosted online. So this year we have decided to change the program format once again, and uh, because we would like to focus on the collaboration aspect of our academic approach. So students basically will be in small groups of maximum five and they will be paired with a mentor. All of our mentors are professionals in the computer science field. They're volunteering their time for this program and the students will work on a specific project together throughout the semester, which will give them the opportunity to learn new skills. This is not a tutoring program. And we are not providing access to a platform where the students work on project individually, like we have done in previous years. This year, we would like to provide a very different experience for the students to be able to make friends across the nation or locally in California, if we can help it, because we have an office over here, in order to create something concrete and something that they can be very proud of. So it's basically going to be one project or the same project made by an entire team. If the student is new in the field and needs to study a program language, a programming language like Java or Python, the mentor will provide documentation and websites, and it will be up to the students to do their homework in between meetings. They will be encouraged to, uh, to learn by themselves while having the support of the group to be able to ask questions. So every Saturday, each group of students will meet online using our Discord server. We recommend a minimum of three hours of meetup time, but it could be more if they're in a crunch mode. If the group is in a different time zone, they can decide their own meeting time, but we are trying to get everybody on the server at the same time especially if we have special events. Uh, the mentor will be present during the Saturday meetups and they will be working on their project. And basically what they will be doing on Saturday is that they want to define what their project is about. They want to um, build a scope of it. Um, they want to build their programming skills. So maybe there will be a time where they're actually working on the syntax, on certain uh, aspect of a programming skill lang uh, programming language, they want to also take. I want um, to take the time to connect with another, with one another. So it will be a time where they can do some icebreaker exercise, maybe even playing games online a little bit to just, you know, take a break. Maybe that would be also a good time to ask any questions, ask questions to mentors, ask questions to their peers. Um, so it's really an exchange, a time where they need to exchange. Um, so they will meet for the first time on September 25th, and the program is one semester long. So on December 15th, that's the end of the program, which is where their final project and their presentation is due. So 
So what can the project, the what can the students work on? So here are the different projects that we are opening on our registration form. The first one is create a PC. Although we're still looking for a mentor to take this, this on, uh, we are thinking of opening a group at, for making a PC. Um, we will uh, have the students study basically the hardware, what, what elements uh, are necessary to create a PC, how much it costs, how to resource it. And uh, basically the students will need to get their own parts and then they will try to assemble the PC um, and basically have their own PC. It could be made in a very cheap way if they decide to just learn the process and maybe upgrade the parts later on when they have a little bit more money um, or they can go for the high end if they want to. That's totally up to them. The other subject is game design using Python programming language. So the students will collaborate to create one big game. They will use collaborative tools to mix their code. Um, and then we'll learn the basic syntax, but also data structures, classes, which is an important concept of object-oriented programming. Web design. So a lot of small companies or nonprofits would love to have a website. So why not serve our community and learn great skills along the way? So we will not use templatized website like Wix or Squarespace, but we want the, the students to create a website from scratch using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, and uh, maybe reuse some Java server and templates that are there. Java app. So if you want to solve a problem in the community, why not create a program in Java and learn one of the most complex languages that exist out there? If you're thinking of taking the APCSA at school, um, this might be a class where you can uh, build some additional experience. Um, this is um, open to any students, however, even the beginners. Robotics. Um, so this is where you want to make something concrete, make something move. Uh, your team will decide exactly what you want to build. Um, and once you want to create, it might be an Arduino project or it could be a self-driving car uh, in small format. It's totally up to you. Um, sometimes projects you know, will require some hardware and depending on your financial situation, uh, we will review every student and if they need something, we could ship it to them so that everybody can participate. Artificial intelligence, AI. So this is a very large topic uh, from data science to learning algorithms. Uh, AI is being used everywhere. So this group of students will explore what already exists in the AI algorithms world, um, the importance of data and the importance of qu quality data. And they will create a project um, that might create an impact out there. So these are the six different topics that we have um, for the uh, for the semester, we are in a very tight schedule for the enrollment. So, if you are interested, um, the enrollment starts tonight. Uh, we have a web page where you can apply. Um, so, between August twenty sixth and September fourteenth uh, is the submission for enrollment, and so. Uh, we urge you to make sure that you have completed your, your form by uh, September 14 and submitted it. The students will need to be the one filling up the enrollment form. However, we need to, uh, we need to have the legal guardian contact information for consent in case you are accepted to the program uh, if you are uh, not 18 years old. There is a limited amount of spots available. This is a very popular program. Uh, we have been rolling it out every four years. So I would urge you not to, uh, to wait um, and um, make sure that you are going through the enrollment process with a lot of details because we are going to have to select people. I do not think that we will be able to admit everybody and make sure that your application is submitted on time. So when you are ready to go, you will go to um, 
codeforfun.com slash H2S, which is Hack High School. And you will see on our website that there's an enroll now button. Even if you have filled up a previous enrollment form, uh, an interest form for uh, the Hack High School project, you will need to re-enroll because this is the official enrollment form for fall 2021. And this form has uh, different fields that were not there before. So for example, maybe the most important field is when we're going to ask you to describe your goals, why you want to do this program with us and why you're interested in high school and its format. Because we want to check your motivation uh, and we want to check your commitment. We will only accept people who are committed to finish this program and are committed for the full semester. Um, and because we have limited spots, we want to make sure that you're in it uh, to finish it. So what do the students need to, uh, to apply or to do this program? Well, first is what is the cost of this program? Well, for this year, the program is going to be free. Most of the time we have been able to be sponsored and uh, there was one year where there was tuition, but this time we are making it 100% volunteer based. And uh, so that allows us to um, include everybody. We want to make sure that income is not a problem. And, um, and then you can, you know, anybody from different backgrounds can uh, join. However, if you are in the part, in the, situation of being able to make a donation, we will gladly accept the donation as we are a nonprofit, a 501c3. And we recommend, our recommendation is $250 per semester. So to contribute to the cost of this program, because although our mentors are volunteers, this program uh, does not cover all the fees. We have our um, overhead fees um, and administration fees. We also have some survey fees, um, some IT fees. So we want to make sure that we can uh, we can pay our bills. So if you have you know if you have the possibility to do that, um, please uh, look at our donation page and uh, and do your good. In terms of equipment. Uh, you need obviously a computer to be able to connect every Saturday and to code. Um, the, um, the rest of the projects might require some parts. For example, if you create, make a PC, that's on you. Um, some robotics parts, you know, that's also might be on you. However, if there is any financial difficulty, let's talk. And we need, most of we need your time. We need your time, meaning that you need to be committed for the full semester. And you need to know that this program will take about five hours minimum per week, three hours on Saturday, and at least two hours of work in between meetings. So what are the Saturday meetups for? Um, so three hours on Saturday, we think that it's going to be between 10 and 1 p.m. PST time. However, there is a little bit of flexibility in, in case you're in a different time zone. Um, you need to be invited to the Discord server, which we will do if you get accepted and you will be put in a room. We want to make sure that you are ready to engage, which means turn on your audio, turn on your video, video and join the group. Because when this is, uh, we, we saw that during the pandemic, having you know um, a collaboration um, work being done and a team, a dynamic team moving fast, we want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So unless you have, um, you know, very big reasons why not to, we really want to make sure that everybody feels like they're in the same room. And that means, you know, being participant, an active participant, talking to one another, uh, responding to ideas, you know, even also showing your face. Uh, it's very really hard to connect with people when all we see is, is a black screen. Um, so you will learn uh, during Saturdays, um, beginners are welcome. You don't need to have 
any background in computer science to join this program. Uh, the mentors will be a resource for you. Your, your um, peers will also be a resource for you. We have plenty of pointers where to find um, some, some programs and some projects to build your skills. So don't worry about that. Um, you will also spend your time on Saturday to do teamwork. So organization, who's doing what, uh, planning when, are we going to do this? And what are our milestone and our deadlines? And um, basically a, set, a task list uh, to make sure that we cover all, all of the aspects of the program. And that's what your mentor is going to be very helpful with because they are professional in the CS field. And so they have to be organized and, um, and collaborative at work. And so they can tell you how that looks like. And then finally, um, we need to make sure that, you know, so on Saturdays you will work for the three hours, but during the week also make sure that you carve out some time because you will have a task list and sometimes you will have to do something before the next time you meet. So make sure that you have, <clears throat> you have the time for that. Uh, so again, uh, we want to make sure that um, you will uh, be committed because we are going to be in a very small team and uh, everyone is going to be an important player. So if you quit midway, then your team is going to be um, left with you know, a bunch of the work. Um, you will have time to... Um, to basically go and we'll review the timeline, but you will have time to basically reaffirm after you have um, submitted your form, you will have time to have a confirmation from your mentor uh, to make sure that, yes, you know, I can do this. So submitting your form doesn't mean that, okay, you're hundred percent in and I will not be able to backtrack. We will contact you if you're being selected. We will contact you and we'll, you have one week to respond to the email and to confirm that, yes, indeed, you want to be in. Uh, let me come back. I think I skipped a little bit. Yes. Um, I just talked about the enrollment process, but uh, let me finish. After what happens after September 14th? Well, the Code for Fun team will review all the sub submissions and select students. Um, we uh, during the uh, the process, we also asking for background uh, information like income, uh, race, and gender. And these questions are in no way a way for us to select, um, to be part of the selection. Um, we do not discriminate based on any of these criteria. This is just information for our statistics, but also to create um, some diversity in a group if we can. So if we have two different groups and we know that all of these candidates are good, and then we went to make those groups a little bit more diversified, we will look at the second criteria to, 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 the, to do this. Um, so this is how we're going to try to uh, create our list of students. And then during September 15th to 19th, so a very short period, the mentors will connect with the students per email. And at that moment, the students will need to respond to the email to confirm that yes, indeed, they want to be part of this program. They will then be invited to the Discord server to join in. And then um, September 26th, uh, the Saturday, the, first, the last Saturday of September, that will be the first day of high school. So sorry, I skipped a little bit on this timeline. I want to come back and talk about that. So again, we have no discrimination based on race, economical background, and gender identification when we mentors are select, uh, selecting the students, but we do want to collect this information through uh, the form. All right, so the, um, 
the first trimester semester is going to be um, planned as um, different tasks that are going to overlap with each other. There is a planning phase where we basically need to think about what we're going to build. And uh, during that time, this is where we encourage the, um, the students to actually work on their pitch. Uh, what do they want to build and what do they want to sell? And uh, creating the pitch, I'll talk a little bit more about that, creating the pitch at the first, in the first place, sometimes gets everybody in focus. Then there'll be a part where there's a learning phase. So we need to acquire the skills to build what we want to build. So that means, okay, let's go and brush up on our skills or learn or learn a brand new language like Java or Python or HTML. So there's going to be some learning involved, but at the same time, there's also some building. So sometimes you will learn in the scope of what you need to build. Um, there will be some testing back and forth, there's things that are working, uh, scope that, are that is changing. Um, so that's, that's part of the, the process. There's going to be a loop between building and testing. And then at the end, we need to make sure that we have time to, um, to present. Um, all right. So at the end of the project, we ask the students to finish something and to present it and to deliver a presentation. The presentations are due on December 15th. And uh, so your team will need to think about their presentation, which aims at showing off your product and reflect on the building process. This portion of the program is really important because it strengthens your presentation skills your confidence and the ability to manipulate tools to make a stunning presentation. Your presentation will show what you have built. So if it's an app, you will demonstrate your app, you will you know, explain the audience um, who this app has been built for, what problem does it solve, etc. And we encourage the teams to create the elevator pitch. And I just talk about that a little bit briefly uh, to, to create the elevator pitch at their pro uh, of their product before even building the building phase. And the reason is that it provides clarity for all members of the team on the important characteristic that will need to be part of the finished product. And it will provide, um, uh, also a clarity on the audience for which your product uh, is targeting and also helps boost your motivation because once you have an elevator pitch, then you, you, know, you feel really re-engaged and really gung-ho. When it's time to prepare your final presentation, you will be able to review your initial pitch and refine it based on the compromises you had to make or the enhancements um, that you came up with throughout the process. And you'll be surprised on how much you think you can accomplish and how much you are able to actually push through the door, regardless if it's less or more than the, what, what was initially planned. So it's good to have built that elevator pitch at the beginning. And then, you know, at the end, you just look at it and say, okay, what were you thinking? Or, oh, we were thinking way too small at that time. We were able to accomplish so much more. But at least it gives you a starting point. In your presentation, you will also need to walk your audience through the building process. What were the compromises made, the technical difficulties, the good surprises, the interaction through the group, even if it's online? What was hard? What was easy? Um, tell us uh, and tell the educators, you know, what uh, those kind of project-based approach learning uh, is, is making. And uh, how is the consensus building? So we recommend the team to keep a journal during all the phases of your program so that you, uh, when they build the presentation, you can recall some details. Now, when it's time to record your presentation, you will find that rehearsing as a group, giving each other feedback takes some time. So build it in your schedule. Um, finally, you will get used you will get to use different tools to create a stunning presentation. Are you going to just uh, use Google slide deck like I'm doing in a Zoom meeting or are you going to make a movie that you will edit? 
or create a live webinar with an audience uh, so that you can you know, pitch it in and get some, uh, some questions. So talk to your team and your mentor about the aspect, uh, this aspect, this aspect of your, uh, your phase, like how we're going to present, what is going to be the, the outcome. Uh, at the end, your, um, your presentation will be recorded and it will be posted on our YouTube channel and we will show off your, your awesome talent. I have a bunch of people joining right now. So I want to let you know that this is recorded. Uh, so if you have missed uh, the presentation, the first half hour of the presentation, don't worry, I will put the recording into our website and you will be able to catch up on and everything. But welcome. If you have any question, please uh, use a chat. So the presentations, this is for a message for the students. The presentations are due on December 15th. Once you have complete, completed this semester, uh, we want you to be very proud of your accomplishments, proud of your learning journey. What is useful? Uh, what, are the, what are the useful failures? And um, uh, what were your motivating wins? Uh, finishing something concrete will give you a story that you can talk about during interviews. You can talk to your teachers, to other students to get them excited about CS. Um, and it will be very useful for whatever you decide to do later. Uh, you can also expect from this program to know a little bit more about your taste for software or hardware development cycle. Is computer science a field where you thrive? How confident, uh, how is your confidence level afterwards? And even do you want to think about pursuing CS as a major uh, later on in your life? And whatever the answers to this question, yes or no, maybe, what is important to you is that you will be able to have answers based on concrete experience and not based on what somebody else has done or uh, somebody else experience. So this is why we ask you to commit for a full semester. Do not quit after two weeks. Because in order to have an opinion on how good, talented, motivated you can be, you need to give it a good try. And finally, uh, you will have a team uh, that you have worked for a full semester. You have a mentor who can testify, testify about how awesome you are and uh, how awesome you were throughout the project, um, how good of a team player you have been. And our mentors can even make recommendation letters if you need some for college. So in summary, um, this is a sign up time. Uh, so you can go to our webpage, goodforfun.com slash h2s, high school. Uh, this year, we are focusing on project and we have six areas to, um, to present to you. So you will need to provide uh, your commitment and uh, information and uh, what subjects you would like to, um, to explore. You can make three choices because depending on how many students we have in the sections, we might balance you. We will try to um, respect your first choice as much as possible, but Nevertheless, we're asking you to give us two other choices in case. And then look at your email, you know, look for your email uh, between September 15th and the 19th. If you are selected, your mentor will let you know after the 19th, if you're not selected, we will receive an email saying, sorry, but you could, you could receive it all the way to the 19th because we could have a first selection of students who will contact in and then they say, ah, well, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to do it. In that case, you know, the next batch gets in. So now I can take questions. Um, if you want to use uh, the chat window, I will uh, look at it and uh, I can um, I can answer it or answer answer your questions. Um, if you are looking for tutoring classes, because again, high school is not a tutoring program. This is a collaboration program with a mentor where students are going to build something concrete throughout the semester. Uh, we are teaching them how to fish. 
But if you're looking for a tutoring program, we do have that. We do have a program called Code with a Coach, uh, which is at, on our website as well. And we have opened up a level four uh, this year, really aimed uh, to, for high school students. But that's separate from the high school program, which is more independent, more collaborative, that will happen mostly on Discord, and, um, and that is free. Also, um, I wanted to mention that some of our mentors are in the Silicon Valley. So if it's convenient for them uh, and they have a group of students uh, in this area, we have an office space in Sunnyvale. And if everybody is comfortable uh, meeting there in a small group, we have the office open to them in, on the Saturday afternoon. So we can keep it uh, available. Uh, it's not a very big office, but it, you will be alone in the room and, um, and it's safe. We have, everybody has to wear a mask and it's sanitized and cleaned. So that's always an option. But it, otherwise, if you're not in the Bay Area, uh, the program is available to you and it will be on Discord server. So per week we have, you need to at least commit three hours on Saturday. That's the time for your meetup. And then, uh, so one question was, what is a tentative time commitment per week? So three hours on Saturday to basically be with your group, interact, build your stuff. And then based on the tasks that are given to you in between meetings, I will say carve out two to three hours minimum of homework of, uh, you know, to advance you know, the project. Uh, the timeline is not super long. It's only one semester. So I really want to encourage, you know, people to do their homework in between uh, meetups. Um, I can come back a little bit to this, to this slide to show you that it goes from mid-September to mid-December. Um, all right, that's pretty much it. Um, again, this recording is going to be available uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow morning on our website if you have missed a part of it. Um, and I want to welcome all students and uh, don't hesitate to, to apply, but don't be late also. We have a deadline for the application and which is sep September 14th. And so make sure that you put it in even if you have created um, another application in, during the summer by uh, filling up our other form, we have a new form and make sure that you do this, this, uh, this work of applying with, through the new form. And we have one more question. Will we will be working to guide or teach students. So this is not a tutoring, um, a tutoring class or program. This is uh, the mentor is there to guide the students. So basically to provide them um, some uh, guidance on how to interact, how to collaborate, to collaborate. They will push them on creating milestone and the planning. And then when it comes to building uh, the project or the program or whatever they decide to, pro to, to build, the role of the mentor is also to give them some pointers of where, uh, where to, uh, to get some, uh, some help on uh, coding skills. Sometimes if there is a, a question from a student like, hey, you know, how do you create a link list? Uh, and what is the structure so we could, the mentor will be there to provide them some links on the internet, but also they could spend some time on Saturday just, you know, doing a quick 15 minutes review on, the, on a specific item. Um, that depends on the knowledge. But really the mentor is there to kind of like from the experience of being a person in the field of computer science and having, you know, experienced many, many times the development cycle, guide the students through that cycle and make sure that they are committed, that they respect deadlines, that you know, if features need to be chopped off because there's a feature creep, then you know, that, that's what happens in real life. So that's more of a guiding role rather than a tutoring role. We will also provide mentors uh, with our um, 
with access to our own um, material that we have used in the past uh, with the students. Uh, we will not open our Canva to uh, Canva server to the students, but it will be accessible to the mentors. Uh, and on there, there's quite a bit of stuff. And so if the mentors want to send some of the PDF file that we have created in the past and they were super useful for the students, that's okay, that's up to them. But sometimes the mentors also have their own resources and there's every year there's new stuff. Hacker rank, uh, I mean, there's just a long list of different things that, um, that everybody have and a bag of tools that is endless. So we want the mentors to make sure that they have you know, this discretion. All right, you guys, um, if there's no more question, I want to thank you for um, joining this session or uh, for viewing this session, if you're look, watching it on the recording. And um, again, welcome and uh, thank you and let's get to code. All right, bye-bye.